So up to now uh, in Version Dog, um, you've either had to wait for the next scheduled upload or execute a job manually. Um, but the new job trigger function changes that, doesn't it? Yes. Here you see the Version Dog server and the OPC UA client connect to different devices on the shop floor. For example, an S7-1500 PLC. And it's possible to trigger a job now via this OPC UA interface with a button next to the device, for example. Or after changing parameters on the HMI panel. Or after changing the tool on the machine. Or after finishing work on a piece, if you have finished working on an item. Mm -hmm. Before starting a new batch, for example or when moving to the next step in the production chain. Okay, and uh, the first one is a manual um, job trigger, the rest are automatic, aren't they? Yes, the first one is a manual triggered job, mm -hmm. but the button and all the other starting events are triggered from the PLC and the version dog server is monitoring this trigger events on the PLC and starts the job if the trigger event happens on that PLC. Okay. Um, and can we see an example? Yes, of course. This is an example with an S7-1500 PLC. Okay. Here in that screenshot you see on the Sarmatic S7 device we have to do some changes in the software here. And also we have to do some stuff in the version dog server in the job section. We have to set up here the connection between the version dog server and the PLC. And the connection here is done via the OPC UA interface. Right, and the uh, S7 1500s have an OPC server built in, don't they? Yes, the S7 PLC 1500 has a built in OPC UA server. You have to activate, and I will show you how to activate and which things you have to set up in TIA portal to get this OPC UA server running. Okay. Here I'm in my image, and here I have installed TIA portal in the version 16 and my version doc user client. I start the version doc user client login and open my PLC project here. Open the editor, version doc starts the tier portal, and then we will see how to set up the OPC UA server functionality on the specific device. We have to activate, we have to license, and we have to create two variables to make the connection between the tier portal software and the PLC and the version doc server. Mm -hmm. The project is starting. Okay, after starting the TIA portal, we can switch to the project view. And here inside the project view, we want to see the properties of the PLC. Now we are in the project view, and we can select the PLC here in the project tree on the left side and switch to the properties of the PLC. After I opened the tree on the left side, I select the device configuration by double click. And TIA portal shows me the properties of the PLC. On the left side here, you can choose the part OPC UA. And you have to activate the OPC UA server on the PLC. This functionality is available since the firmware 2.8 on the PLC. OK, that seems pretty straightforward. Next part, you can also set up uh, user authentication. In our case, we just leave that point out, but it is working. I have tried it myself. Next part, you have to activate the runtime license for the OPC UA server. It's simply select here a license that you have in your company. 
So in summary, activate the runtime license. If you want, configure in the user management a password and a username for the connection, for the secure connection. And here in the general section, activate the OPC UA server. Now, generally, the OPC UA server is activated on the PLC. Now we want to set up the two variables to connect to the version doc server. I have prepared something in the program blocks, a global data block, and inside this global data block, two variables are inside and you have to activate the accessibility from the OPC UA interface. And that's it. That's all we have to do on the step seven side. Okay. Uh, and how do I know that it actually worked? Good question. We have here a little tool. I'm now back on my local PC, not anymore in the virtual machine. And I use a tool, the OPC client tool. You get a lot of OPC client tools for free on the internet. It's just a little executable you have to start. And uh, you have to enter here a server address. It's the address from my PLC. Mm. And then you can simply connect to that PLC to see if your setup on the S7 tier portal was okay. So we find here the PLC2. Here are the global data blocks. And here we find the variables. Okay. We can click here and we see the counting numbers on the programmed variable watchdog. This variable is counting upwards every cycle of the PLC. Okay. Um, so uh, what else do we need to do to finish the uh, configuration? Okay, now we have done the first part. We have done the tier portal part. To finish the configuration, we have to switch to the admin client to set up the job. Now I want to use the new created OPC variables to start a job for here, an example, an ASCII upload. I click here, create a new job, and it doesn't matter which upload type you choose here. It's okay to say we choose a local directory, for example. And here we switch to the execution from not scheduled to the new function it's called triggered by a URL. Oh, that's pretty clear, yeah. And here we have to fill in the data from the OPC variables. Okay, that's also quite straightforward. We find the, OP the name of the OPC variable here in this handy tool in that part. I just copy that part and paste it in here in the field of the trigger URL. And I have also to paste in the part of the state, the acknowledge variable, mm. the acknowledge URL. Oops. There are two directions. The first is from the PLC to version doc. Version doc, please start the job. And the second is from the server back to the PLC. The first is the trigger, and the second is the state. So the PLC knows, okay, version doc has started the job, and after we finish the job, we write another number in the state, we write the number two in the state to say, yes, we have finished the job. And then the PLC can start, for example, the job for another time. So you can block if the version doc server is busy doing the job. So you can prevent that the user triggers the job five, six, seven times. 
Here you can fill in if you have configured in the TIA portal a username and a password. You can fill in here username and password, but it's not necessary. Uh, in our case, we set up uh, in TIA portal without using a username and password. And we have to fill in here the path from my local directory. I switch to the drive letter D, and here I have pre prepared a local directory. Right. Inside that local directory, there is my so-called online project. Right. <clears throat> I save the job. I start it manually here. This is the warning for the first time you run a job. The warning is because there is no previous backup present at the moment. And after the job runs the second time, hopefully we are without a warning. After we tested the job manually, mm -hmm. we now want to start the job from the PLC. To do so, maybe you can remember we have created two variables yep. on the PLC. It's command and something. The command and the state variable. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have to set the command to the value 1. And by pressing the Enter key on my keyboard, this little tool writes the command in the PLC, and version doc monitors every minute the value of the command variable. And now you see version doc runs the job here in the background. Yeah. And we can also recognize that the state has changed to one. Version doc set the state to one. I'm busy at the moment. I'm performing the job right now. Yeah, oh, there we go. So. You have the information in the PLC, the job is running at the moment, and after version doc finished the job, you see the state of the variable goes to the number two. Yes, we saw that quite clearly a few seconds ago. So you have a handshake, you can set the command, and you get the state back from the version doc server. And um, once we've set that once, we can leave it to work automatically. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, okay. That's true. Version dog is looking every minute. Right. This is the smallest interval to check all the OPC items. Um, maybe we will do here some optimization in the future. I do not know. Hmm. Well, once a minute seems quite frequent already. Um, but we'll have to see if customers want it more frequently. Mm -hmm. That's how the OPC trigger variable works with version doc server and how to set up the TIA portal software. Right, well, that was a very clear demonstration. Thanks very much. Thank you.